Good morning and welcome to our live stream on Industry Hall Residential Arts Centre's Facebook page. We're part of Sang Residential Education Service. Um, so welcome to our live stream. We've been live streaming classic uh, children's literature and we've got another chapter for you today of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Um, if you're just joining us for the first time, we are about to jump into chapter 10, so you might want to look back at some of the other videos that we've um, put up on here. We have been collating them into a playlist. Um, to be fair with you, I'm just getting to grips with how to put playlists together. Um, so um, yeah, it might be a bit of time before chapter 10 appears on there, but they'll get there eventually. Um, there's definitely a playlist on there of all of the chapters of Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So you might wanna check those out as well. And what I've been really um, touched by, I suppose, is how people have been using these videos um, as and when they feel and as and when they choose and how they choose to as well. So some people have been um, tuning in live and joining us live, which is great. And some people have been um, using the videos when they see fit that that way you can listen to more than one chapter if you want because i think that each video lasts around about 15 minutes so if you want to settle in and have a couple of chapters yourself then you can um have a look at more than one video some people have been using them as bedtime stories as well as apparently my voice can be a little bit soporific which means to um put you to sleep which I think is a good thing if it's a bedtime story. So welcome, Glennis is here. She's managed to tune in on time, which is great. <clears throat> She's got the technology now. So we're about to jump in to chapter 10 of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And the title of this chapter is The Guardian of the Gate. Where we've just left off, by the way, I should say, is they've just escaped the poppy field. Dorothy was falling asleep, so the Tin Man and the Scarecrow carried her out of the poppy field to make sure that she would wake up, uh, and the Lion ran on ahead, hoping to escape the poison of the poppies that were sent to sleep. However, they stumbled across the Lion. He had fallen asleep, and he was too heavy to carry. And they discovered the Queen of the Mice, and hordes of mice all um, pulled a kind of trolley that had been made by the woodman uh, with the lion on the top to save the lion. So we're about to join them just after that. So chapter 10, The Guardian of the Gate. It was some time before the cowardly lion awakened, for he had lain among the poppies a long while, breathing in their deadly fragrance. But when he did open his eyes and roll off the truck, he was very glad to find himself still alive. Oh, I ran as fast as I could, he said, sitting down and yawning, but the flowers were too strong for me. How did you get me out? Then they told him of the field mice and how they had generously saved him from death. And the cowardly lion laughed and said, ha, I've always thought myself very big and terrible, yet such little things as flowers came near to killing me and such small animals as mice have saved my life. How strange it all is. But, Comrades, what shall we do now? Well, we must journey on until we find the yellow brick road again, said Dorothy, and then we can keep on to the Emerald City. So, the lion being fully refreshed and feeling quite himself again, <clears throat> they all started upon a journey, greatly enjoying the walk through the soft, fresh grass, and it was not long before they reached the road of yellow brick and turned again towards the Emerald City, where the great Oz dwelt. The road was smooth and well paved now, and the country about was beautiful, so that the travellers rejoiced in leaving the forest far behind, and with the many dangers they had met in its gloomy shades. Once more they could see fences built beside the road, <clears throat> but these were painted green. And when they came to a small house in which a farmer evidently lived, that was also painted green. They passed by several of these houses during the afternoon, and sometimes People came to the doors and looked at them as if they would like to ask questions. But no one came near them, nor spoke to them, because of the great lion, of which they were all very much afraid. The people were all dressed in clothing of a lovely emerald green colour, and wore peaked hats like those of the munchkins. This must be the land of ours, said Dorothy, and we are surely getting near the Emerald City. Yes, said the scarecrow. Everything in gre is green here, while in the country of the Munchkins, blue it was the favourite colour. But the people do not seem to be as friendly as the Munchkins, and I'm afraid we shall be unable to find a place, place to pass the night. 
Oh, I should like something to eat besides fruit, said the girl, and I'm sure Toto is nearly starved. Oh, let us stop at the next house and talk to the people. So, when they came to a good-sized farmhouse, Dorothy walked boldly up to the door and knocked. A woman opened it just far enough to look out and said, What do you want, child? And why is that great lion with you? Well, we wish to pass the night with you, if you will allow us, answered Dorothy. And the lion is my friend and comrade, and would not hurt you for the world. Is he tame? asked the woman, opening the door a little wider. Oh, yes, said the little girl. And he is a great coward, too. He will be more afraid of you than you are of him. Well, said the woman, after thinking it over and taking another peep at the lion. If that is the case, you may come in, and I will give you some supper and a place to sleep. So they all entered the house, where, they, where there were, besides the woman, two children and a man. The man had hurt his leg and was lying on the couch in a corner. They seemed greatly surprised to see so strange a company, and while the woman was busy laying the table, the man asked, Where are you all going? To the Emerald City? said Dorothy, to see the great Oz. Oh, indeed, exclaimed the man. Are you sure that Oz will see you? Why not? she replied. Why, it is said that he never lets anyone come into his presence. I've been to the Emerald City many times, and it is a beautiful and wonderful place, but I have never been permitted to see the great Oz, nor do I know of any living person who has seen him. Does he never go out? asked the scarecrow. Never. He sits day after day in the great throne room of his palace, and even those who wait upon him do not see him face to face. What is he like? asked the girl. That is hard to tell, said the man thoughtfully. You see, Oz is a great wizard, and can take on any form he wishes, so that some say he looks like a bird, and some say he looks like an elephant, and some say he looks like a cat. To others, he appears as beautiful as a fairy, or in any other form that pleases him. But who the real Oz is, when he is on his own, in his own form, no living person can tell. That is very strange, said Dorothy, but we must try in some way to see him, or we shall have made our journey for nothing. And why do you wish to see the terrible Oz? asked the man. I want him to give me some brains, said the scarecrow eagerly. Oh, Oz could do that easily enough, declared the man. He has more brains than he needs. And I want him to give me a heart, said the tin woodman. Oh, that will not trouble him, continued the man, for Oz has a large collection of hearts of all shapes and sizes. And I want him to give me courage, said the cowardly lion. Oz keeps a great pot of courage in his throne room, said the man, which he has covered with a golden plate to keep it from running over. He will be glad to give you some. And I want him to send me back to Kansas, said Dorothy. Where is Kansas? asked the man with surprise. I, I don't know, replied Dorothy sorrowfully. But it is my home, and I'm sure it's somewhere. <clears throat> Very likely. Well, Oz can do anything, so I suppose he will find Kansas for you. But first you must get to see him, and that will be a hard task. For the great wizard does not like to see anyone, and he usually has his own way. But what do you want? He continued, speaking to Toto. Toto only wagged his tail, for, strange to say, he could not speak. The woman now called them that called to them that supper was ready. So they gathered around the table and Dorothy ate some delicious porridge and a dish of scrambled eggs and a plate of nice white bread and enjoyed her meal. The lion ate some of the porridge but did not care for it, saying that it was made from oats and oats were food for horses, not for lions. The scarecrow and the tin woodman ate nothing at all. Toto ate a little of everything and was glad to get a good supper again. The woman now gave Dorothy a bed to sleep in, and Toto lay down beside her, while the lion guarded the door of her room, so she might not be disturbed. 
The Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman stood up in a corner and kept quiet all night, although, of course, they could not sleep. The next morning, as soon as the sun was up, they started on their way and soon saw a beautiful green glow in the sky just before them. That must be the Emerald City, said Dorothy. As they walked on, the green glow became brighter and brighter, and it seemed that at last they were nearing the end of their travels. Yet it was afternoon before they came to the great wall that surrounded the city. It was high and thick and of a bright green colour. In front of them, and at the end of the road of yellow brick, was a big gate, all studded with emeralds so that it glittered so in the sun, and that even the painted eyes of the scarecrow were dazzled by their brilliancy. There was a bell inside the gate, and Dorothy pushed the button and heard a silvery tinkling sound within. Then the big gate swung slowly open, and they all passed through and found themselves in a high arched room the walls of which glistened with countless emeralds. Before them stood a little man about the same size as the munchkins. He was clothed all in green from his head to his feet, and even his skin was of a greenish tint. At his side was a large green box. When he saw Dorothy and her companions, the man asked, What do you wish in the Emerald City? Uh, we came here to see the great Oz, said Dorothy. The man was so surprised at this answer that he shut, uh, that he sat down to think it over. It has been many years since anyone asked me to see Oz, he said, shaking his head in perplexity. He is powerful and terrible, and if you come on an idle or foolish errand to bother the wise reflections of the great wizard, he might be angry and destroy you all in an instant. Oh, but it is... Um, Sorry, this is the scarecrow, not Dorothy. But it is, <laughs> it is not a foolish errand, nor an idle one, replied the scarecrow. It is important, and we have been told that Oz is a good wizard. So he is, said the green man, and he rules the Emerald City wisely and well. But to those who are not honest or who have approached him from curiosity, he is most terrible, and few have ever dared ask to see his face. I am the guardian of the gates, and since you demand to see the great Oz, I must take you to his palace. But first you must put on the spectacles. Why? asked Dorothy. Because if you did not wear spectacles, the brightness and glory of the Emerald City would blind you. Even those who live in the city must wear spectacles night and day. They are locked on. For Oz so ordered it when the city was first built, and I have the only key that will unlock them. He opened the big box, and Dorothy saw that it was filled with spectacles of every shape and size. All of them had green glasses in them. The guardian of the gates found a pair that would just fit Dorothy and put them over her eyes. There were two golden bands fastened, that fastened to them that passed around the back of her head where they were locked together by a little key that was at the end of a chain the guardian of the gates wore around his neck. When they were on, Dorothy could not take them off again, had she wished. But of course, she did not, wash, she did not wish to be blinded by the glare of the Emerald City, so she said nothing. Then the green man fitted spectacles for the scarecrow and the tin woodman and the lion, and even on little Toto, and all were locked fast with the key. Then the guardian of the gates put on his own glasses and told them he was ready to show them to the palace. Taking a big golden key from a peg on the wall, he opened another gate, and they all followed him through the portal into the streets of the Emerald City. And that is where we leave chapter 10. So chapter 11 is the wonderful city of Oz. Um, so um, as it's Friday, we're going to have a little break over the weekend. So join me again on Monday for chapter 11. Have a great weekend. Maybe check out some of our other videos. Have a look at some of the other resources we've um, been providing for you as well. Um, they are posted links and things like that on Facebook, but sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to find them in the newsfeed and find them on our page. So you can find them all in one place on um, our website. So if you visit www.sandwellresidentials.co.uk forward slash 
at hyphen home, you will find all of the videos that we've been posting elsewhere, all of the resources, lots of art packs, lots of art projects, things you can practice in uh, the garden, free apps that you can download to make your own music, all sorts of stuff to keep you busy and creative. So thank you very much for joining me again. I will see you on Monday with chapter 11, The Wonderful City of Oz. So stay home, stay safe, and stay, cre stay creative. I'll have my teeth in by Monday, fingers crossed. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>